What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 50 of Lured Up, the podcast where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Yo, episode 50, holla! Ha! 50 high, we're almost to 100. <laughs> Halfway yes. there. We're like right there. <laughs> almost. We're so close, I could taste it. Today is Sunday, October 14th, 2018. I'm your host, Ken Pescatore, joined by my two co-hosts, Adam Tuttle, and Melissa Pescatore. You've already heard him. Hi, guys. How are you? What up? What up? How, oh, hello. How, how's everybody's day, weeks, weekends? We've, we we just recorded not too long ago, so the, the gap hasn't been too much because our recording date was late last week. But here we are, the calm before the storm. I feel as though this the psychic event got, like, toned down for this other other event. Like yeah, and it was only the twenty-four psychic hours. Event got, they got it got played, man. It got interrupted twice, and we'll get we'll definitely get into that. But uh, no, what we're talking about right now. <laughs> Freaking Pikachu's, Adam's drinking juice boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was Adam's birthday. Happy birthday, Adam! Oh, Happy thank birthday. you guys. Yay. Here's a present for <sighs> you. Ta-da! Is it wait? Is it from Deli Bird? It is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> little housekeeping really quick this podcast is powered by patreon check ours out over at patreon.com slash gotta watch them all where you can support this show for as little as one dollar a month and that one dollar will get you access to our patron exclusive discord which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people and i want to give Cheers. a huge shout out to our show supporter to your patrons Brittany, j jessica keith matt m pitts terry david and chris Thank you guys Aww, so very guys. much. We appreciate your support so, nice. so much. All right, on today's show, like I said, this is this is kind of the calm before the storm. We know Gen Four is coming, probably tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's like it's it's literally any minute now. So a lot of things are just either wrapping up or in or kind of in transition. And you know, the Gen Four shit storm is going to be coming. You know, probably this by the time you hear this podcast, but couple things that we're going to review on today's show. Uh, October 11th was the International Day of the Girl, and Niantic got involved by having an all-female event, which was pretty cool and uh, very different, which I really liked it. And uh, I loved it. Yeah, Melissa was just like, oh my god, look at the spawns. There's love disc everywhere. They're pink. <laughs> I know. Where were the chances? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what, what I Ma- said. Melissa said the same I, shit. She was just like, was "Yo, like, where's the Chansey event? Everywhere. Where's the Chansey? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Chansey's Chansey. They they need to do something with Chansey for show. All right, Go Hub's APK mine of zero point one two three point one is here. We kind of touched on this last week. It was just last week's episode that we did the one was it one one nine point five APK mine, and we talked about one two three point one just coming out. Well, now the full mine has been done. And uh, we'll review that in detail. And there's a lot of Gen 4 goodness in there. Niantic, again, is leading the way in AR. They signed a really significant deal in Europe uh, with a German telecom company. So we'll kind of talk about that. John Hankey teased the AR Playground on his Twitter account, which was pretty sweet. And I think this is going to be something dynamic that is going to be coming to the game really soon. And it's going to be just like the weather system or just like AR plus in general, it's just going to kind of slide into the psyche and the zeitgeist of what the game is all about. And it just looks like an amazing, just cool way to interact with Pokemon. I can't wait for that. Gen four is imminent. We talked about that last week, you know, and we'll just go over some of the details or some of the things you should be aware of as we prepare and get into gen four. And like I said, by the time this podcast drops, my I'm pretty confident that gen four is going to be out. And then finally, we didn't do it last week. We'll do it now. Alakazam, Solo Raid Guide, and Battle Party. We'll get into that at the end of the show. All right, let's 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 catch up on all this shit. The female Pokemon event, which was pretty cool. This is the International Day of the Girl Child. That's the, that's the actual name of it. This is a United Nations recognized day that focuses attention on the need to address the challenges girls faced and to promote girls' empowerment and the fulfillment of their human rights. So this is... Something that's sanctioned and, you know, supported and and funded really by the United Nations. So this is a pretty cool initiative. I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out. But to celebrate, they released this all-female Pokemon event. And like Adam was teasing that before, this was kind of, it hijacked the Psychic event. Because we had the Psychic event running for the past week. Then the, you know, Nazi Pikachu comes out, and that kind of screwed with the Psychic event. And then now you have the uh, the all-female event. That's kind of hijacking real estate and time and spawns from the Psychic event. 
Uh, but this kind of came and went, but it, it was a one day, 24 hour thing. I kind of did these micro longer. events. Well, look, if the, if the spawns were more varied, I would, I would agree with you. I think it was really cool. And I like that you can, you know, the, the shiny love disc thing was a potential because there was plenty of love disc around. But the big deal of this event was the release of the female Nidoran line as a shiny. And this is really ironic because last week's episode, we were talking about shiny drowsy and how we've kind of been passing over catching shiny hypno or shiny Zatu because the evolved forms can't be shiny in the wild. And they kind of broke that typecast with this all female event where the whole Nidoran line, so you can get a Nidorina and a Nido Queen wild as a shiny, which was pretty cool. So now that's a thing. So hopefully that'll continue on where, you know, holy shit, can you imagine finding like a, a wild uh, shiny Gyarados? Like that would be freaking. That'd be crazy. That'd be awesome. That'd be so awesome. Yeah, that'd be like, oh man, I hope it's not an AR plus mode. Oh, dude. Well, mm. uh, well you know, we're going we're gonna to get into a little bit of AR Plus talk, you know, towards the end of the episode because Melissa is upgrading her phone tomorrow. And we'll, I have to. <laughs> and we'll have AR Core and uh, we'll be able to take uh, take part in AR Plus for the first time ever, which is cool. Which is cool. Yeah, her phone is just fucked. That, that shit did not want to work today at all. It was bad. <laughs> it just opens random apps. <laughs> like, and then once, like, once an app is open, it just won't close it. Ever. And then her battery will drop like 20% in like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then it's like the phone is 300 degrees like burning. Like At all could, times. You could cook an egg on the back of it. It's like ready to explode. Remember when those Samsungs were exploding? <laughs> that was awesome. I thought those were iPhones. No. I thought so. No, they were no. galaxies. Remember they were used? <laughs> There's a lot of good memes about that. But yeah, shiny Nidorans everywhere. Except my Pokemon storage because I didn't get shit, <laughs> and you didn't get any shiny, right, Adam? No, not even not even like any of the love discs or anything like that. Like, yeah, Same and it was weather boosted the psychic too. Event. So there was tons of love discs at work. I had no no shiny drowsy either, so I went over. You know, goose eggs on the Wingull, the Krabby, the drowsy, <laughs> the Z- the Natu. I don't have any of that shit. So, yep, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I, I I need to get my my they they need to release a shiny charm and I need it immediately because my shiny luck is has been low exceptionally low lately. But this kind of plays into last week we were talking about is too much too much like is this is there just too much shit going on? And I think the psychic event is a good equalizer here about this conversation because you have an event that gets interrupted twice by too many events, and this is almost like. When Reggie Rock was here, and then they threw Ho Oh back in the mix for a couple days, that kind of took away from Reggie Rock. Like it seems like this is it becoming didn't take a- away from Reggie Rock because Reggie Rock was stupid. <laughs> I get, you know what? I guess you're right. Yeah, no, it was just, everyone it, it was like something else. Yeah, it's like it was just fun because it was something else. And honestly, I think kind of the same thing with this. It's like, is it really taking away from the psychic event? Like, really? Well, if you're really hunting for a shiny drowsy, like if you're really on the grind and it's like, uh, the, are you, the guys, spawns you guys, would... are you really like you really need that? I need that those shiny those drowsy? creepy fingers. I mean, I get it. We all want it. I get it. I want I want it all, every one of the shinies that could possibly be shiny. But you know, the event's going for two weeks already. No, well, it's over now. Today's the last day. So no more no more psychic event as of tomorrow. So by the time this is yeah, but is you can out, still always get the shiny in the future. Uh, yeah, it's in, in the wild, but you know now the the spawns are going to go back to normal levels, and drowsy isn't typically a very common spawn, at least in this, at least around these parts. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather gift, I'd rather Adam. catch the the drowsy. The fact of the matter is, I like these micro events, but I just don't like them when they when they're on top of another event. Like, I think this is what they could do to kind of bridge the gap between the week-long events, where you could have a week-long event, have it maybe 24 to 48 hours off where there's no event. Then you throw one of these 24 or 48-hour events in. Then you can go offline again for two days, and then you can have your next event. I think that's a nice way to keep it going where, again, it brings that expectation level down to, I can still enjoy this game if there isn't, you know, a... Niantic endorsed event going on and that's the what I'm worried about is we're bringing all these new players in 
and they're so used to like shit flying in every direction. There's twenty, th- you know, thousand things going on that when there's nothing going on, they're going to be like, "Oh man, this game is stale as hell." Like there's just, you know, where what what am I trying to catch today? Like it's not as you know in your face as saying, "Hey, here's all these psychic Pokemon." So I don't know. I think too much is too much. I hope they back off a little bit, and I hope they spread this stuff out. But you know, once Gen Four comes, it, it's all, all bets are off because it's just going to be a, a mad dash to kind of. You know, hopefully they'll they'll back. It, actually, it'll be interesting to see how the spawn pool is really affected. Like, how predominant will Gen Four Pokemon be over the Gens One through Three spawns that we're currently seeing in our areas? Like, will will it really go over the top? Will Gen One start to spawn less than Gen Two and Gen Three? Like, I don't know. That that would be some cool research. Like, hopefully, Go Hub will put something together where you know you can uh, submit data of what kind of spawns you're seeing because. They're going to, you know, if, if you're hunting for, on a specific Pokemon, now you're 400 whatever Pokemon deep. It's uh, it's going to be hard to find specific Pokemon now. You know, it's, the, the pool is getting bigger and bigger. It's going to be interesting. But that kind of leads into the APK mine of, of 123.1, which everyone is kind of touting as the Sinnoh update because everything was packed in here. Adam, why don't you run through some of these moves that um, were released here? It did, And there's a couple standouts, but... Re- any of the like there was 18 total moves including meteor mash so meteor mash we knew was in there and then they added 17 additional so there's 18 moves in total but adam anything here jump out at you besides meteor mash skull bash skull bash because like how i don't know they like a, a move that normally you attack and then you take damage afterwards I believe that's Skull Bash. Or it's yeah, that's actually a good know. no no. That's a good call because a couple of these moves actually are, you know, in the main series games, these moves were reserved for special attack. So there was things that would happen, different conditions, uh, like leech leech life or whatever, where you're going to be doing damage to your opponent, but then also gaining some hit points back. Like so, it'll be very interesting to see how some of this stuff plays out. So but I, I figured you'd like punch. Crab Hammer. Yeah, Drain Punch. Exactly. That's that's what I'm talking about. You have these these. These two-way moves, so it'll be interesting. But anything else here uh, jump out? Octazooka. Yeah, the hell <laughs> So is that? this is actually Octillery's signature move. Now, there's certain moves that are signature moves of a Pokemon, just like Meteor Mash is for Metagross, but other Pokemon can learn Meteor Mash besides Metagross. Now, Octazooka is a Octillery exclusive move. So is this kind of foreshadowing to the community day that's beyond Beldum? Will it be, you know, um, the Octillery oh, line? Oh, God, I hope not. I'm just that saying, would be like, sick, why, though. why would this move be here if it's just uh. like, you know, the one-off? That's It's just it's it's interesting, but Blaze Kick is in here, Muddy Water, Shadow Bone, which is Marowak's signature move. So there's, there's definitely some funky things in here, but all, all these moves are in there, which is... This is, it's just, it's coming. It's so freaking close, I could taste it. Um, all the new Pokemon forms for every single Pokemon are represented in the line of code. Now, they even have 18 different forms for Arceus, one for each type. So you have an Arceus fairy type, Arceus dragon type, Arceus fighting type, and so on, all the way for all 18 forms. And then all the other Pokemon that have multiple forms are all listed as well. So they're definitely going to be pushing the different form thing and you know and exploring that just like they've been doing with with say spinda and then which i still don't have you got, i'm telling you, you <laughs> know, no, yeah, honestly but, melissa you know i swear to god you know what we got to do you got to come back and hit red bank because you need the opportunity to get in front of like 35 40 unique stops because you'll find the quest you just gotta you know keep rotating through because they're out there but if you're if you're spinning the same stop over and over, you're not going to have that chance to, to acquire the right quest, the right task. You got to like plan it right too. If you want to double your chances to go out at like 1130, do the oh, first so you run. Get the mid- after midnight. Yep. yep That's the way to do it. Call. Uh, AR plus coming to Android that all that code is kind of is in the one, two, three point one uh, APK. This is big news. Like this is really cool. And it'll lead into the next thing with, with Niantic here, but um, a multi-select tool, it's a quality of life thing for building parties, so uh, you don't have to go back and forth between the character select screen and your inventory. You can kind of multi-select Pokemon, drop them into a party. Meltan, this is a, this is a great topic. This is, and I, would, I definitely want to hear what people have to think about this. So 
when Meltan was announced and it kind of came through, we saw it. Trials dug up that it was meta tagged with number 891. So everyone was like, oh shit, this is Dex number 891. This is a Gen 8 Pokemon. So we it, that was kind of debunked because there's different in-game ID tags. Like uh, Zorora is 807, right? Or 806. But his meta ID is a different number. So there is some discrepancies in some of these later Pokemon in Gen 7 that they've announced. But there's even more debate now over going on over at uh, Cerebi.net with um, Joe Merrick, who's always posting super active on Twitter. And he's been going back and forth saying, like, look, there, there's plenty of data out there that says that these numbers can be different. So <laughs> Melt, the, the thing with Meltan is still up in the air of where this is going to live in the deck. So I'm very intrigued to see where that happens. But there's hints of it happening in this APK. We just don't know what it all means yet. Uh, there was a new type of box found, a new image asset. So this is different than the Pokemon Let's Go transfer box. This is a, like, it looks like a, a gift box that you would buy in the store, but it's kind of blue and pinkish. It's real pretty. All this shit stacked into the APK. I am, uh, I am fucking ready for Gen 4. Like, this is going to be so awesome. I can't wait. There's so much shit changing. Like, over this next week, the game is going to really, really kind of refresh itself. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how the new like rebalance with the weather weather system and everything is for the spawns. Yeah, everyone should if you by the time you hear this, if the balancing hasn't happened yet, I recommend taking a snapshot of your top CP Pokemon. Uh that way after the balancing of CP you can kind of get a reference as to how things changed for your specific Pokemon. Because I have a feeling that I don't know, last week I was saying, hey, maybe the stuff at the top will stay or maybe it'll get lightly nerfed, but uh, who knows, man? This could be something where the big dogs on top really, really get affected. I don't know. I don't know. We were just talking about AR Plus on Android, and uh, Melissa is so excited because she's you didn't get the Galaxy Nine, right? S S Nine is that what it's called? That's the that's the uh, new that's S9 the newest plus. one, right? You're gonna get yeah. the big one. I think so. Oh shit! Stepping it up. As long as I can fit it in my back pocket. You can't fit, I, and that one you have it's, now. It's like a computer fits. tablet. Melissa's <laughs> back pocket could probably like anything beyond a credit card. You, you ain't fitting in Melissa's well, then back again, pocket. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, the the plus is going to be too big. The plus is going to be too big for you. I have to hold. I have to go and hold them in my hand, and whichever one I can hold in my hand and swirl my thumb <laughs> with one hand, then that's the one I'm going to get. <laughs> But you're going to be able to do this on Android. You have to download a separate app. You have to download the AR Core app, and then I guess that kind of unlocks some different capabilities of the phone, and then that'll let it run within the game. So exciting stuff. But Niantic did just sign a big AR deal uh, with a Deutsche Telekom. It's a 5G network that will allow their real-world platform. So this is the platform that of AR that Niantic is licensing out for other developers and other publishers to use in their games and their IPs, allowing AR and all this stuff to happen as an environment and thus kind of spreading the gospel of Niantic and their real world platform into a ton of other games that are going to be available. So this is like a real big freaking deal. And one of the things that's really important about this is it ties back to the Escher Reality acquisition, uh, which happened a couple months ago. Escher Reality was the company that focused on creating persistent AR experiences where within the environment, multiple planes in the AR environment, you can place an object and then that object can then be anchored to a GPS location. So now you're taking an AR thing, and you're kind of bridging the gap between AR and GPS. And then where that item is anchored, it, that that GPS location can then be transmitted to a different device. So if I see an item in that area that's around this corner by this bush, and you walk over with your phone in AR mode, when you hit that GPS location, you're going to see that same item from the same angle, you know, that's just from your cool. perspective, because it's going to be persistent between devices. So that's what the Niantic's real world platform is kind of all about is this framework that you can create AR experiences on. And the more that this expands, the more the refinement will trickle back to Niantic. Now I, I liken this to something like the Unreal Engine in console video games or, or you know, where the Unreal Engine's a thing 
and then they license it out to a billion developers. They all let run their games on it, but each of them are working specifically on Unreal. So their feedback and their, you know, well, work trickles back to the, the people developing Unreal. So that makes that a stronger platform. So I'm really excited to see what people can do with the real world platform because that ultimately means if there's a breakthrough by a third party, ultimately that's going to make its way back to Niantic and, you know, potentially release through Pokemon Go. So it's just, it's a big deal and uh, I'm just very excited for it. Now this is, there is Michael T. Jones. This is a spokesperson for Niantic. He's he's done some press stuff before um, and I think when... They acquired Escher. He had a statement as well. But this is what he had to say, and I think this is really interesting. He says, quote, We're hard at work on technology that bridges the physical and digital worlds to pave the way for new entertainment experiences, advanced robotics, and scaled adaptive computing. We're excited to partner with Deutsche Telekom and Mobile Edge X to access ultra-low latency networks and develop systems that would enable the full potential of our real-world platform. So it's like... Niantic has had this stuff ready to go. They just needed kind of the rocket fuel to get it out there into the world. So um, it's just, this is just, a, it's a big deal on the back end and something you probably won't hear about on Twitter because it's not, you know, that sexy to talk about, you know, but this is like a real big deal for Niantic. So um, good good stuff. And then that, that pairs into this. Adam, I, I don't think Melissa saw this because she's not on Twitter, but Adam, did you see John Hankey's tweet about the AR Playground? Yeah, where he was playing with the Eevee. So this is huge. This is it was the, fantastic. The offline kind of thing where you don't have to be engaged with catching a Pokemon to to hang out with that Pokemon in AR. So it look he, he's like in a park and he drops his Eevee into the park and he's moving his phone around and the, uh, they purposely did this with an Android too, which is really cool. And he's able to pan his phone from left to right and the Eevee is anchored to the plane on of the grass in the park. So, okay, but wait, wait, wait. He just takes a Pokemon out of his right. Inventory? So it's not like this isn't like a Snorlax. This isn't a wild, like, a yeah. like this isn't a wild EV that he's in a catch sequence with. This is just a. He just says, "Hey, I'm going to hang out with oh, this so Pokemon," and you. Oh, so the, so he teases that they're going to do what I actually want them to do with the game and not have had to hold my Snorlax exactly. In that's exactly they, yep. Or... That's exactly it. Now they teased this. At, I think it was at like an Apple event a couple of years ago when AR uh, AR Plus was first announced. But they said this they were you're, it was going to allow you to scale with accurate scaling, place multiple Pokemon in the same space. So like multiple? yeah, well, well, and in the, in the demo that they did previously, they had like a Charizard, a Pikachu, and Eevee all together. But in this new demo, oh they just show Eevee running around, but. What's amazing is he's panning the phone from left to right, and you're seeing this, and the Eevee is running around. Wherever he's panning the phone, Eevee is still connected to the ground and is just kind of bopping around, moving around in the grass. And it's just like he's hanging out with Eevee in the park. But the only way to see Eevee is through the lens of your phone. So it's so cool. Just so cool. I can't wait. That's really awesome. And honestly, like if you could take pictures and stuff with in that mode, it's going to open up a whole new way of artistically expression artistic Hell expression yeah. for for people and a whole different way to play the game in a way 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 more casual well, way. Well, and Jurassic World Alive and Walking Dead both have these modes where you can just drop your character in the AR space and pose them, and then takes pictures. So it's like, once you could do that with Pokemon, like, oh my god, it's going to be... I can't wait. Deadly Bird uh, Central. I'm going I'm to have way more fun. Well, that's what... You, like, you don't have to, like, oh, I got to go out to play, or I got to do this shit, or this or that. You know, I got to restock. I got to do box maintenance. Like, no, you could just be sitting in your living room and, like, drop Snorlax there just to chill with you. It's like, yes! And do a photo shoot. Let's have a Pokemon Man, photo Man, that's shoot. why you need, like, like Google Glasses... So that way, just like everything you see is just there. Ah, oh, technology. <laughs> Jesus, right. help me. All right, Rocket Fire, Gen 4. It's imminent. 106 new Pokemon. The least amount of Pokemon in the wild in this generation. I think it's something like 46 when you take out all the extra evolutions and the babies and the legendaries. Uh, so it's the least amount in the... Then, Gens 1, 2, or 3, 
of Pokemon that you could potentially see in the wild regularly. Uh, but there's 22 new evolutions, seven baby Pokemon, nine legendaries. I'm really interested. Adam, you probably will have some understanding of this from watching the anime and the video games here, but all the different items that are available that kind of were introduced through evolution mechanics for Gen 4. Like, I don't even know if the, any of this shit's going to make its way to Pokemon Go, but there's a lot of it. Honestly, if they need, if they want to get, you know, Espeon and... Ugh. Honestly, if they want to figure out, you know, Leafeon and Glaceon, they've got to have the Dusk or the Dawnstone. Well, th- that's the thing. There's all there's tons of new items. Shiny Stone, Razor Fang, Razor Claw, uh, Reaper Cloth, Electrizer. Some are like, like Magma Miser, Magmizer. That's specifically for Magmortar. But some of these are like multiple Pokemon are affected by these items. So it'll be really interesting to see what they do there. And then you start getting into different evolution mechanics, like location-based evolution mechanics, where uh, you have to be in a ma- magnetic field to evolve, you know, in magnet magneton, or if you need a moss rock or, or by stand by the ice rock to evolve, you know, Eevee to Glaceon or something like that. How are they going to translate that to Pokemon Go? Will there be special evolution mechanics? Um, what about learning a move like the, in the original games there was cert- if a pokemon learned a move that would trigger their evolution so could they do something like that where you could tm into a move and then evolve i don't know that's interesting i mean that's very uh plausible and i think that would be really cool and then because it's something different what about it's another way to consciously get rid of your yeah, get teams rid of without having to just throw them away <laughs> yes well w- you know that brings up a good point too of uh, we're not necessarily bag space, but Pokemon storage. If Gen Four is coming tomorrow, that means bag storage is coming tomorrow. They gotta release it. Like what the fuck? I've been deleting Pokemon the entire time we've been. It's I'm, t- I'm it's so annoying. It's so freaking annoying. I hate it because I'm just constantly living between fourteen hundred and fifteen hundred Pokemon, deleting as I go. It's so annoying. It's not a very efficient way to play. <laughs> Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, Burmy. Burmy is a Pokemon that has multiple forms. Its evolutions have multiple forms. Um, some of them had, you know, the, the forms were based on locations. So depending on where you would find the Pokemon or evolve the Pokemon, there's gender-specific evolutions. There's all types of mechanics associated with that. So this could be another situation like Smeargle or even Delibird where the release of that Pokemon was re- was delayed because they have to figure out how the hell they're going to implement those mechanics and go. Uh, region exclusives might be Shelios and Gastrodon. That might be... They, they, they seem like the, the yin and yang Pokemon of this, uh, of this generation. And then we have a shit ton of legendaries. So it, it's, it's going to be a very busy generation. And it's going to be a very dynamic generation. Because you're having so many different evolutions from previous gens. You're having... Um, all this other stuff that they may or may not bring into the game. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, Melissa, do you even, does it matter to you that there's a new Pokemon coming? Like, are you excited for that? Like, do you think that'll revitalize you a little bit? Yeah. Cause you're not familiar with these Pokemon. You were out at gen four. Yeah. I, that's the only reason why I'm excited. Cause I really don't know what to expect. So I'm hoping to see some. Well, learning goodness. names is fun too. You know what I mean? Like that's. Oh God! But yeah. I, you 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 get munchlax. I know I do get munchlax. Munch well, that's if you can get yeah. out and hatch the eggs. Yeah. Do do we all agree well, that it's going to be the ghosts <laughs> first? Is that do we do we think that's what's going to happen here for for their first release yeah. of Gen Four? I guess. And then they make it. You know, Mewtwo goes away, and then Giratina is our raid boss, the ghost dragon type. So. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, but only have it for an exclusive like two or three days to get everybody hyped. How the hell are they going to do this? They're, I, they're definitely going to roll it out like they did Gen 2 and ultimately Gen 3 where they have the you know couple Pokemon here and then two weeks later a couple more Pokemon and you know break it up by typing or something. But I think the I'm pretty confident the ghosts are going to be first, which I'm okay with. But... I just want lunch lacks. Maybe they'll do the babies and the ghosts. That'd be cool. I'm I'm down well, for the babies. Well, yeah, that's the, the only babies. way to get mushlags. 
Give I'm down for the for the ghosts. Yeah. I mean, it is Halloween. Well, they got to so. do something. They got to do something. Yeah, it better be pretty. They're, they're, they're still they're still gonna. You know, they're still bringing back which hat Pikachu. Right? You th- oh, oh no. my they're god! Do it to you us. think they're that, gonna do no, it? To don't even get me started. <laughs> I swear to God, they're gonna do it. <laughs> well, I'd be upset because it's like, why not just give us. A, a be- tiny increase. I, I hear you like Jerry Seinfeld. Like, why not just give us what, we, what the fuck we want? Why not just give us? <laughs> oh. oh, shit. But yeah. Uh, all right. A couple bits of miscellaneous news before we get into the raid. A um, couple bits of miscellaneous news before we get into the Alakazam Solar Raid Guide and Battle Party. Um, psychic event, like I said, is wrapped up. Uh, next week is fucking Beldum Community Day. That's like, again... There's just so much shit going on. The community day used to be like the big hype event of the month. Now it gets kind of lost in the in the shuffle. It's crazy. But that's happening. So Shiny Metagross with Meteor Mesh is coming. They didn't announce Meteor Mesh. I guess that announcement's going to come tomorrow too. The uh, the exclusive move. That'll have to come tomorrow. But my guess is Meteor Mesh. <laughs> what a shocker. <gasps> what? What, what, what? Melissa's going. <gasps> what, is there something in the house? No, I just accidentally bought the Pikachu fan headband. Oh, you're oh, Pokemon oh. Master Holly. God damn it. <laughs> God damn she, it. She has three things on her on her avatar that she bought by accident. God damn it. <laughs> I'm wearing all and, of them and, right and now. That's, and you like just start. Oh, oh, you know what, folks? God damn it. I wait, just got everybody, those coins. Look, Fuck. big shout out to everyone who gave Melissa shit on social media and in Discord for not playing. <laughs> But she played this week. Listen, talk about your exploits. You actually played. I know. I did. I did. I did. Mute. I've got more than my two Mewtwo. Yes, we, she went two for two with Mewtwo. How many? What? I've got. I've got four. That's now. it. See, that doesn't sound like you, Melissa. She, the Melissa. I know. She was reluctant. She was reluctant. Well, reluctant Adam, too. I started. I, I started playing again. You know, for for, for my fans. <laughs> for the. <laughs> <laughs> Wu Tang is for the children. I was following in the, I was following in the footsteps of of my fellow Pokemon lovers, Reversal and oh, see? And, and and Pokemon Master Holly and Dan and Tan, and I'm I'm playing for my friends. You're really following in Brandon Tan's footsteps footsteps by playing for your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Only I'm not oh, getting shit. paid. No, yeah. So, so Melissa and I did a couple Mewtwo's. We actually raided with people from the new area that we live in, and then today we went back to our old stomping grounds and raided with our old raid group, which was awesome. That was fun. And I she went two guys. for two on fucking Mewtwo today. I was like, what? It was awesome. I had I had a Mewtwo run on me, which was very very disappointing. So I've now had two I'm Mewtwo's happy. run. I was like you. <laughs> yeah, she's like she's yeah, like so, fuck you whoa. and your fifteen Mewtwo's. I was like fifteen. I have twenty six Mewtwo. <laughs> yeah, so. the second Mewtwo outside of EX raids I did, it ran on me. Oh. So I was like, Ugh. yeah, I'm sure there's there's people with hundreds of Mewtwo. Oh my god, I just had a really funny thought. So I thought about like that new AR mode and being able to place as many Pokemon as you want and like having all my Snorlax <laughs> out at once and just having them all like just bouncing bounce, 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 bounce on the screen. Oh my god. Or like if you had all those Mewtwo and like you can put like 10 of them out there and there's just like No, no, like if you if you could oh place god, a Snorlax so and then fun. take a Munchlax and like put it on Snorlax's belly. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, I just I just want to put a bunch of oh my god! I just want to put Snorlax in the middle of the road in different blocking places. The, the, the chronic he can blocking have his own Instagram path. like it's just Snorlax blocking various paths. <gasps> don't, you know what? Just delete that. Just delete that because I don't want anybody stealing it. <laughs> that is a good idea. <laughs> I'm doing it. What else we have here? Uh, oh, let's do a, a quick Go Ranger check in. I'm going to go over to Go Ranger App. Go Ranger App. This is a great location to get reminded of what's Do going stuff. on, and I always forget when the nest migrations happen. So this is big. This is a, a great opportunity to get to stay up on that. So there's a nest migration in two days. So on the 17th of October there will be a, a migration. Now this is an important one because they told us that there's going to be changes to nest mechanics where there's going to be more varied Pokemon coming to parks and things like that. 
So it's going to be very important for everyone to make note of their nests and report to Sylph Road because this may be the last nest migration prior to the mechanic change. So it's going to be important to kind of gather as much data as we can now where it, it just in case if they do start rolling out the changes to nest mechanics with this migration, we're ready to capture that data and kind of, you know, get it to the, the nerds behind the screen that can kind of decipher it and give us conclusive evidence because all I know how to do is gather the evidence. I don't know how to make sense of it all. Mewtwo raids available for another eight days until uh, Tuesday, October 23rd. This is probably going to be the Giratina switchover. That's uh, putting my cards there. And then Suicune, our current um, October breakthrough um, Pokemon, you got, you know, 17 days left on that. So still to, through to the end of the month. Melissa's going to get her Suicune tomorrow, right, Melissa? Yeah, yes. she's excited for that. As long as get I... Get your stamp. Yeah. As long as, long as you I gotta get that Dude, stamp. she's been doing good. Like, the, like we're, 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 I don't know what we were doing. We went out to eat the other day, like, and she's just like holding her phone all casual on the side, and I'm not thinking anything of it. And I look, and she's accepting gifts and sending gifts. I go, oh my god, she's back. It's fucking great. Someone in the Discord, it was great. I think Jacket K said, like, oh shit, Melissa caught something. Like, I don't know. Or and then someone went, <laughs> she, she opened my gift. Like, holy shit, she's actually playing. <laughs> This is so funny. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, but yeah, so nest migration number 65 happens on the 17th. Make sure you report. It's an important one. Melissa and I are doing Deoxys tomorrow. Yay. So Yay. Psh, leave this the, guy uh, out The it. first time, the first pass that I got that was canceled was at the Starbucks by our house. And now finally, I got another one at that same location and was able to share the invite with Melissa. So... Yes, Deoxys. If all yes. goes well, Deoxys will be in the decks tomorrow. So, well, shout it will out, be shout out to my like Facebook group because I posted in there. I was like, "Hey, I still don't have a uh, an EX raid pass for tomorrow, and I have the day off." And immediately, somebody's like, "I sent you a gift, or I sent you a pass." That's awesome. Nice. I was like, "Boom!" Yeah, the hell yeah. Thanks. That's that's good stuff. No, it's cool that seeing the different threads that have been popping up on Discord. Like, hey, you know. EX raid sharing, which is uh, it's cool. It's definitely added a new dynamic, especially because you can duo Deoxys. So I mean, honestly, you could just invite a friend and take care of that shit on your own, which is awesome. If you got you know, good party, good battle party. Speaking of battle parties, whoop, whoop. Alakazam Solar Raid battle party. What the fuck is it? It's a battle, battle party. party. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Jesus! That that was the wor- I think that was it. the worst one yet. It. We're keeping it. We didn't even, even we didn't even, even repeat even the whoop whoop it. twice. We just did it once, <laughs> and I don't care. I'm keeping it because that's how terribly tired we are. All right, Alakazam Solar Raid Battle yeah, Party. Sorry. Adam, you want to run through some of the details here? Uh, always with the details. The deets, yo. The details. Deets. He needs I need the, the deets. deets on Alakazam. He needs the Kato, deets. Kato Nolan on, needs the deets, the deets on Alakazam. She loves Alakazam. All right, so Alakazam. He's a tier three pure psychic type raid boss. He sits at a 22,646 CP. His weakness are bug, dark, and ghost type. And he's boosted in windy weather. All right, so it's perfect CP catch for level 20. Alakazam is going to be 1,649. Level 25 is going to be 2,062. And that's with weather boosted from the wind. Oh, yeah, windy. Windy. Well, yeah. yeah. Some of the main counters are going to be Mewtwo with Psycho Cut, Shadow Ball, and Tyranitar with Bite Crunch. Watch uh, out for Focus pay Blast. Attention. Yeah, because it's just yep. like with Mewtwo, you will get fucking wrecked with Focus Blast if you're running T-Tars. And then we have Gengar with Hex and Shadow Ball. We have Banet with Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball. Absol with Snarl and Dark Pulse. Houndoom with Snarl and Foul Play. So I, I put Binet and Absol and Houndoon in here because I think it's just a good opportunity to use some Pokemon that... I mean, Houndoom, I guess, has has had some action. But Absol, Binet, you know, these are these are Pokemon that, you know, you know it's like digging through the crates. Like, this is a good opportunity to use them because when, when the hell else are you really going to going to do that so and the irony is i ain't bringing them to my battle party my solo battle party but i'm saying you could if you wanted to why wouldn't you bring them to your battle party well, look this is a solo battle party if i was playing with a bunch of people and i can get creative then hell yeah i'm gonna bring you know 
Gengars and Bennets and Absols and, you know, I'll spread it out a bit. I mean, I'll bring bugs. You know, it's like I, I rarely bring bugs to battle. So, I mean, this is an opportunity to do that, too. But I can't wait for Shiny Pincer. Like, imagine bringing Shiny Pincer out. That'd be cool. That would be cool. What is he, like, blue? He's blue. Oh, and look out for Shadow Ball uh, if you're using Mewtwo. Um, so, you know, again, just like Tyranitar is going to get wrecked by Focus Blast, um, Shadow Ball is, you know, you're going to be weak to it with Mewtwo. I'm I'm just bringing three Mewtwo and three Tyranitar, so long as it's not Focus Blast. And if it's Focus Blast, I'm bringing three Gengar. So three Mewtwo are the staple, and then either three Tyranitar or three Gengar based on Alakazam's move type. And I'm I'm pretty sure and confident that I'd be able to solo this thing, even in windy weather, uh, you know, pretty, pretty easily. Adam, what are you bringing? So for me, I am bringing pretty much the um, the same thing I did for the Mewtwo. I'm going to bring in my Lucky Mewtwo, my 98% Gengar, my Tyranitar with Bite and Crunch, my Bennett with the Shadow Ball and Shadow Claw, and Pinsir and Heracross. Oh, that's right, the, the Heracross, bite. man. That's or nice. Bite, bug moves. Yes. Oh, does your, wait, what do you, how's your Heracross spec? He has bug and fighting moves? Uh, well, he, yeah. Oh, so that's cool. So you're still rocking the stab in both cases, which is cool. Right, because Heracross is bug fighting. Yes, yes. Right. but right. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Well, Alakazam's sure? not weakness to fighting, right? No, but he, no, that's what I'm saying. You're still getting stab. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not. You're not getting effect type effectiveness, but you're still getting stab. You want to know who I'm bringing? <sighs> um, let's see. Weedle, um, Caterpie, uh, Pidgey, Sandrine. And Goldine. Goldine. <laughs> I'm bringing, okay, I'm bringing Psyduck, Goldine, Rattata, I, I Weedle. Fucking hate, I hate you. I just fucking hate you. Get, get two <laughs> really six strong Snorlax. ones. Six Snorlax. She's going to bring six fucking Snorlax and she's going to stand. She's just going to be the, the gonna, kid actually, eating glue and bouncing actually, around in the corner. Yes, I, I was gonna bring my I was gonna bring my four Mewtwo since I have four Mewtwo now. And you see, but this is the thing: your your Mewtwo's you can't spec them with with I don't care Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is legacy. I don't care. So now they're gonna have Thunderbolt or or Ice them. Beam or I'm bringing them all. I don't care what moves they have. That's the ones I'm bringing. <laughs> you know, you know what? It's it's still better than going with recommended. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> yo, the recommended engine has been sh- so shitty lately. Like, I've been doing a lot of gyms. That's you know something I've been focusing on with with my gameplay, and the recommended has just been sucking. Like, they're giving me blissies and slack kings, and it's like, why, why, why is attackers why? Like, you're doing it wrong, game. They need to they need to tighten that shit up. All right. Well, anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you so much for checking us out. Please leave us a review in iTunes. That would help us greatly. And check out LuredUp.com for everything that we're doing. Uh, Adam, you got anything else? Melissa, you got anything else? Anything? You got anything else? Um, just get out there and do some foggy weather. Alakazam. Yes. Yeah, Alakazam. I, saw a lo- I, I actually bro. saw a lot of Kadabra during the uh, psychic event. Kadabras, Hypnos, Slowbros. I'm like, man. Abracadabra. Oh, where, who, where, my ha- where my half I wish fans? I saw more Slowbros. Abracadabra. <laughs> Abracadabra. <laughs> Alright, well that's gonna wrap it up. Check out lureduck.com. Thank you for our patrons. We'll see everyone next week. Bye bye.